Hey guys, welcome back to the deck box and this week's Spell Spotlight. Um, the episodes where I try and look at cards and tell you why I think they're good and why I like them. <laughs> um, if you don't want to see cards spoiled, go elsewhere because this week uh, we have more spoiled cards. Um, how many more, you ask? The rest of them, except for I'm not going to talk about them all here because that would be a long video. I'm just going to talk about some of my favorites out of the new ones and why that they are my favorites. If you haven't seen the new cards yet, click in the description box below. I have a link for the new cards, um, all the visual spoilers. Um, but with no more ado and um, with no particular order, I'm going to go through and talk about some of my favorite ones. Um, so first off, we have the Elbrus, the Binding Blade. That was a bit of a mouthful. Elbrus the Binding Blade, um, which is a 7 mana legendary artifact that gives you plus 1 plus 0. Oh my gosh, that's huge, right? It gives you it gives your creature a whole more, um, you know, 1 power. Uh, but I'll, I'll give you a little, a little hint, I'll tell you a little secret here, um, that that artifact uh, doesn't just give you plus 1. Um, the second part is where it really turns crazy. Um, the equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you unattach Elbrus the Binding Blade, and then you transform it. Transform it into what you ask. Uh, this thing, um, the Witgar Unbound, <laughs> um, who uh, is a legendary creature demon, um, who has flying, intimidate, and trample, and he's a 13-13, so pretty freaking sizable. Um, also, um, in multiplayer, because this won't matter in one on one scenario, because your opponent, if he dies, it's over. Um, but if a player loses the game. Put 13 plus 1 plus 1 counters on Witgar Unbound. With Withengar? I guess it's Withengar. I'm sorry. Something like that. Yeah, so he just gets huge. Turns into 26 26, and that'll keep happening. So if you're playing multiplayer, people are dropping around the board. He's going to get huge. But I mean, on his own, he's already a 13 13 Flying Intimidate Trample. So it's pretty beasty for 7 mana. It's, it's good. It's very good. Um, so yeah, that's what that does. An artifact that turns into a, a giant creature. Pretty cool if you ask me. The next card that we're going to be talking about is one that I think is cool because it essentially allows for a new kind of deck to work. Um, my one friend Wes, who you'd seen on um, a couple of our videos, he's played a game or two on gameplay videos and he's also been in the round, ta uh, bleh, the round, table, dis the round table discussions as well. Um, He's been talking about making a curse deck where you just curse out your enemy with all these new um, enchantment or curses um, until your enemy is just at such a bad position that he can't even play anything anymore. Essentially, you know, he can't he can't win the game at all. <laughs> um, and this would be a really cool way to do it. It is a five mana curse um, enchantment um, curse misfortunes enchant player at the beginning of your upkeep. You may search your library for a curse card that doesn't already have the same name as a curse attached um, to the enchanted player and then you put it onto the battlefield attached to that player and then shelf your library. So essentially once you play Curse of Misfortunes on them you can every upkeep fish for a curse that's not already on them and put it on them which means um, technically you don't need to run anything but black and you can have all the different colored curses and if they're coming out of your library you just keep dropping them on them. You just need a way to get them out of your hand really. Um, Essentially, essentially, this curse will allow you to just put curse after curse on them and uh, really, really screw them over. You know, you just you have a couple cards that would um, essentially just give you buffer room to get up to that five mana. So, you know, like little things that just stall them, really bug them, typhoid rats, Gideon's Lawkeepers maybe, um, you know, a uh, feeling of dread if you want to go white, um, yeah, Doom Traveler is even because you have to die twice. A card that's later going to be talked about in this video. So lots of stuff. But I mean, cursing your opponent out could be a really interesting deck type. Maybe something that you could try in some casual play. The next card that we're talking about is one that I'm very, very excited for. Specifically for my white-black deck because it's just awesome. It will just replace a card I already have. It's called Lingering Souls. I think I'm going to put the cards here. If not, I'm looking really stupid right now. <laughs> um, Lingering Souls. And what that does is it's a 3-drop. It's a sorcery, and you put two 1-1 one, one white creature tokens, uh, spirit tokens, um, with flying onto the battlefield. Exactly the same as Midnight Haunting. All of those things, exactly the same as Midnight Haunting, except for the names changed. The one big difference is, it has a flashback, which Midnight Haunting does not have, for one and one black. 
So for two mana, less than the original casting cost, you get another two 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens. Just awesome. Absolutely awesome. Everything the same as Midnight Haunting, but just better. So Midnight Haunting 2.0 now will exist, and it will be awesome. Um, the next card is one where I saw the art and thought it would be amazing. We were calling her the Treplade chick for a long time because it looks like she's holding a trepidation blade from Innistrad. Um, <laughs> but she's actually, she, the artwork for it was on uh, the channel page if you check that out. Go check out the channel. Um, because she looked awesome and I hope that her card would stand up to her artwork and I think it does. Um, she's Markov Blade Master. She's a creature, she's a vampire warrior and she has double strike which is awesome on its own. Um, except for that she's a 1-1 for 3 mana, so that wouldn't work out at all. Um, but whenever Markov Blade Master deals combat damage to a player, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on her, right? Um, so that's, that's cool, that's really cool, but what's, what's cooler is that Double Strike um, will allow you to, if you hit your, your opponent, she's essentially dealing damage twice, she will actually gain two, two plus 1 plus 1 counters every time she hits them. So she can build up very, very quickly, um, especially if a way to, to get through with her. Um, but once she is bigger, double strike damage is just awesome. You'll be able to just hurt them extremely badly. Um, and at the same time, deal with other creatures very efficiently with her um, because she'll be essentially a three drop that is now just enormous. So she's great. Really awesome card. Really excited to see her in play. The next card is one that I... I I wish was a little stronger. Um, people are going to jump on me for that probably now. They're going to be like, no, it's a great card. But um, I just think it's really, really cool artwork, really flavorful. It's called Scorch the Fields. It is a five drop for four mana and one red, and it's a sorcery uh, at common. Destroys target land, Scorch the Fields, and deals one damage to each human creature. <laughs> um, so essentially just throwing fire all over the place, destroying a land, and hurting the peasants. Um, if you were familiar with those old uh, Homestar Runner cartoons, <laughs> um, Trogdor, it's, uh, it's, it just comes to mind as soon as you see this card. Um, yeah, you want to burninate the peasants and burninate the countryside, there you go. <laughs> um, I'm not going to sing the song, I'm not sure that's copyright. Uh, anyways, uh, really cool card. The artwork on this card is amazing. Just look at that giant dragon, just towering over the battlefield, laying fire everywhere, like literally blocking out the sun. Just absolutely cool. I almost wish that this card was a bit more powerful just because the artwork's so amazing. Uh, the next card we're talking about is truly an amazing card on its own, and the artwork is my favorite artwork in all of Dark Ascension. Um, it is called Thought Scour, and for one blue mana, what it does is an instant and target player puts the top two cards of his or her library onto his or her graveyard. Um, so you mill two cards, and well, or you make your opponent mill two cards, whatever you'd like, and then you draw a card, which replaces the Thought Scour in your hand. Absolutely awesome in my opinion. If you're trying to make your opponent mill, um, it, it's probably pretty good. If you're trying to make yourself mill, absolutely awesome, I think, because you're dropping two cards, you're gaining another card that's gonna let you do something else. You know, like you're replacing the Thought Scour artwork's amazing, and uh, I'll read the flavor text for you. As you inject the viscous vitae into the brainstem, don't let the spastic moaning bother you. It will soon become music to your ears. <laughs> Creepy. Anyway, so that's a, that's a cool card, I thought. Um, the next card I'm going to talk about is Thraben Heretic, um, who I think is really good, especially with the, the kind of decks that are being played right now. Um, so Thraven Heretic, two mana, one colorless, one white. Um, she is a human wizard, and what she does is she's a 2-2 that every time she taps, you exile a target creature card from a graveyard. So I think it's an extremely useful uh, card because first off, two mana for a 2-2, it's decent just for the body itself. That's a decent price for, for that body. And then on top of that, you're getting that added effect. Where, you know, if you're sitting there and you're watching and you see your opponent has a Scop Ruinator in his graveyard, uh, you, you don't want to have to deal with that, really, on the battlefield. Um, and she just lets you go, boop, he's exiled. Sorry. Um, so I think that's awesome on itself. There's there's other cards, too, that you don't want in your opponent's graveyard at all. <laughs> um, the first one that comes to my mind is the Vengeful Pharaoh. Don't want that in their graveyard. Don't want them having it just don't want it there at all, so just exile it, 
get rid of it and you're good to go this next card though takes the cake for me well it doesn't really but it, i think it's awesome i think it's going to see tons and tons of play and you can quote me on that and i might be wrong but i feel like it's going to see a lot of play it's called undying evil one black mana instant target creature gains undying until end of turn absolutely awesome if you're running any black at all because basically what it's going to do is you have a huge problem out there and you're just dealing with people just attacking going nuts and your opponent's looking for a way to solve this problem if they go to like go for the throat it doom blade it they finally get enough creatures to kill it they use you know two incinerates to take down it you know anything like that like they really mustered the forces to take this thing down well you know, you tap one black, you toss Undying Evil on the stack, and now not only did they fail to kill him, essentially, like, they killed it, but it comes back bigger. Like, they, they not only got it off the battlefield, in fact, it's now a bigger problem than it was before. Absolutely love this card. I think it's absolutely amazing. Love it, love it, love it. Um, and then the last card we're talking about today, a little underwhelming with some of the cards we talked about there, but I feel like we have a nice curve of excitement and then a nice little, um, you know, ease, ease off at the end here. Um, Young Wolf. <laughs> he is a one green drop, and the reason why I'm going to talk about him is because I feel like, um, as a common, a one green, I feel like he's going to get a good amount of play in aggressive green decks, because essentially he's a one drop that you can play who who has undying so essentially what's going to happen is you play him first turn he's able to do his little damage his blocking whatever and then he comes back when he's dead as a 2-2 so i mean essentially you're paying one green mana for two creatures a 1-1 one, one, and a 2-2 two, two. in my mind that's how i see it and i could be wrong again of course but i feel like this card will get a lot of play um and uh, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Those are the cards I wanted to talk about today. If you saw any cards in these spoilers that you thought was really, really cool, um, type it down below. I would love to hear from you. I will. I always respond to people. Um, so I'd love to talk to you about it. So go ahead and tell me what your favorite card is. Uh, also, like the video. really helps. Share it to your other Magic friends. Also, it would be awesome. Also, I want to let you know something. Uh, guys, if you were wondering what happened with the gameplay this weekend, I know probably somebody was wondering that right now. Probably you. It was you, wasn't it? The person watching? Essentially what happened was uh, we decided we'd do a legacy game um, because a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of players are older players uh, who have a lot of older stuff and um, I, I don't have older stuff, which is essentially like some newer player. I started last March, um, if anybody wanted to know. Um, so I don't have those super old, super awesome cards, uh, so I don't play Legacy yet. Um, and uh, so that's why we've been seeing a lot of Standard. But I figured, you know, probably some of the viewers would like to see some Legacy stuff. So uh, we took a Legacy video. Unfortunately, the cards in it I'm not familiar with, and I tried to comment on it uh, the way I usually do, and the cards were just going straight over my head, really. I was not understanding what they did, what they were doing, and uh, it just it wasn't going to be a good video. Um, so, what I will tell you is that I will get that video up with somebody who actually knows what they're talking about by the end of the week, um, and you'll get another video this weekend. So, essentially you'll get two videos sometime this week. So, I thank you for your patience, guys. Looking forward to hearing what you have to say about this video, and we'll see you real soon. So, roll for choice, you. Bye.